There is a powerful story in 2 Chronicles chapter 20. One day, King Jehoshaphat was informed that an enormous army had gathered against the people of Judah, and this army was coming for them. 2 Chronicles chapter 20 verse 2 to 4 reads, Some men came and told Jehoshaphat, A great multitude is coming against you from Edom, from beyond the sea, and, behold, they are in Hazazan Tamar. Then Jehoshaphat was afraid and set his face to seek the Lord, and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. And Judah assembled to seek help from the Lord. From all the cities of Judah they came to seek the Lord. When King Jehoshaphat received the news, I imagine that he felt a whirlwind of emotions and had so many thoughts running through his mind. They were in danger. They were under severe threat. All of their livelihood was in danger. Their possessions, their homes, their families. Everything was under threat and the Bible tells us that the king was afraid. Now, it's never a good thing when the king, the leader, the head is afraid. But. The Bible tells us that when he was afraid, he set his face to seek the Lord. Not only that, but he proclaimed a fast. Notice that when Jehoshaphat was afraid, when he was given the terrifying news that an army was coming up against him, his first instinct wasn't to build a defense system. It wasn't to evacuate. He didn't call his finest warriors to strategize about a battle plan. No, he went to pray and fast. Now, I'm not too concerned about how the story ends. God did deliver Jehoshaphat, but that's not where I want to put my focus on. I want us today to look at what this man did. Look at his instinctive response to fear. His first port of call was to pray and fast. Isn't that an amazing display of faith? You have just been given the news that your enemies have plotted and schemed against you. They have gathered together with one objective, to come and steal, kill, and destroy everything you own. What would you do? What would you do if you found out that the devil and his demons have plotted and schemed against you? They have gathered together with one objective, to come and steal, kill, and destroy your family and your home. What would your first reaction be? What would your instinctive reaction be? Now, when was the last time you chose to pray and fast when you came up against difficulty? When was the last time you got your family together and prayed and fasted together? When did you last stand in agreement with your loved ones regarding the spiritual forces that come against your family? Jesus warned his disciples in Mark chapter 9 verse 29 that some battles need you to do more than just quote the word. The Bible reads, So he said to them, this kind can come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. Dare I say, some battles in your family can only be driven out by prayer and fasting. Some spiritual attacks can only be overcome by prayer and fasting. Some spirits can only be cast out and cast away from attacking your family through prayer and fasting. Now let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for being our deliverer. We praise you for being our source of protection. We honor you for your precious blood that protects and defends us. You're a beautiful master because you hear the sound of our voices when we are in need. Your word in Psalms 5 verse 11 to 12 says, but let all who take refuge in you rejoice. Let them ever sing for joy and spread your protection over them that those who love your name may exult in you. For you bless the righteous, O Lord. You cover him with favor as with a shield. 
May you cover our lives with your favor as a shield. May you cover and favor our homes with your favor as a shield. Lord, should we be under attack from the enemy? Should we be threatened by the forces of evil? Let our first response be to seek you first. Let our first response be to run and seek your presence because there is none who can stand against you. Lord Jesus, should our enemies gather together to plot against us? Should the devil and his army seek to attack us? Psalms 110 verse 1 says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. Indeed, we pray, Lord Jesus, that you would make our enemies our footstool. When we stand in faith and believe in you, you will make our enemies our footstool. Lord, we will seek your face first, even when we are faced with danger, because you will make our enemies our footstool. I pray, Father, that you would give us the spiritual maturity and awareness to pray and fast. Whenever we come up against stubborn strongholds and stubborn spirits, give us the grace to overcome through the powerful combination of prayer and fasting. May the Holy Spirit help us and empower us to be able to fast and discipline this flesh. Your word in Matthew 4 verse 4 says, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. We will live by your word, Lord. We will be sustained and nourished by your word. Your word that provides food for our spirit. Father, we live by your word which says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue which rises against you in judgment you shall condemn. Lord Jesus, we shall not live by bread alone, but we will live by your word which says, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Lord Jesus, your word offers us hope for every possible scenario that we could face in this life. Your word offers us hope in times of difficulty and in times of persecution. Your word is needed. It's a necessity and it's important for us as believers. We trust in your word, King Jesus, because the grass will wither, the flower will fade, but your word will stand forever. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 18 says, For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved it is the power of God. Father, may your word remain alive and active in our hearts forever. May it be active and alive whenever we are threatened by the spirit of fear. I pray that our instinctive response would be to always turn to your word before we act. I bless your name, Lord. Be glorified always. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.